So I guess, Kat, you've you've kind of been in the middle of people, processes, and technology for 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 quite a long time. I, how do you balance integrating things like bespoke and off the shelf tools with a specific budget in mind for a client who might not have what you know? I, I see this a lot as people people come they don't really appreciate all the hard work that goes into marketing. It's a bit of a black box for a lot of people. And from the outside, it seems really simple. Um, you know. Oh, you know, if I had a penny for every time I've heard marketing team referred to as the colouring in team, you know, it, that's what it perceived as from the outside. So how do you balance that budget with what the client actually needs and wants? Yeah, it can be, it can be really challenging because I think, you know, going back to that Land Rover story from before, everybody's got these big ambitions and their budgets don't necessarily line up. I think it's all about keeping an eye on the big picture and keeping an eye on Who's your customer? What are you actually trying to do? And so that might be your external customer. If you're thinking about a project like a website, like you want to know what the external customer is trying to do with that, with that toolkit. But I think also keeping a, an eye on what the internal team need as well is really important because there's no point in making something that looks beautiful for, for your kind of customer if then your internal team have an absolute nightmare keeping it up to date and like using that toolkit. And I think that's where people go wrong sometimes. Um, you know, you see it time and again, they've kind of just started kind of going through a process and and going, oh, well, we need a new website, but having thought about, well, what's the business goal that you're trying to do there and what are all the different ways of um of achieving that goal? Like when I was in develop in the development world, I used to get um really frustrated with clients who came to us having solutionized their problem and you know they would kind of come to us and say, We need a X, Y, and Z. Well, what? Why do you need that? What objectives? Are you, let's wind back. What objectives are you trying to hit? And therefore, what's the best possible way we build something that will do that? And it might be you need a new website, and it might need to be bespoke because you've got a really niche requirement. But usually, it's something different when you kind of get into it with a client. It's more, oh well, our current website needs a new front end, but the back end's fine. Or it might be actually the main problem is in the integration with some internal system. And so we should probably invest the money in fixing that because it's going to have more of an impact. Um, and going back to Sam's point before about business therapy, that discovery phase is like the the most useful part because you get someone to just kind of tell you everything that's wrong with the current world. But then I think one of the most powerful questions is tell me what's going right in the current world because then you'll cover a load of stuff that their existing platform actually already does really well. And if you're thinking about replacing it, you're going to go, well, actually, you might, you might have to invest this much to get you just back to where you are now. Do you really want to do that? Or do you want to build an improvement project? Do you want to work on something behind the scenes instead and automate something in the background rather than think? Because everybody can visualize what a new website looks like. It's easy to jump to that being the solution to all problems um, without doing that little bit of analysis. I'm not sure that really answers the question, though. I don't think there is a yeah, simple answer just to it. That's, that's exactly why I asked it. I, I think everybody's kind of got their own answer to it, but it is interesting. The, the, the more experienced marketers that I speak to, there is a level of confidence there about how they influence the business owners to question the things that they're bringing to the table so that they come to the right conclusions themselves. And it is almost about coaching and mentoring them into the right frame of mind. And I think that's a bit that a lot of people miss out on. They don't have that skill set. And so they end up trying to do what the clients ask them to do. And, you know, with the best will in the world, the cu customer is always the customer. That is true. But the customer doesn't always know what the customer needs. They just know what they want. And um, you think it's really, I guess, it's really easy to kind of get on that hamster wheel of just delivering um, something and just kind of, okay, the, We'll change direction again, let's deliver that. And as an internal team, it's really hard to challenge. But I guess given that it's kind of a nice position to be in to when somebody's brought you in who was already kind of said, okay, we need we know we're kind of lacking in this area and we need some extra support here. So, you know, we we're kind of we we understand that we're in kind of a privileged position and we've got that extra weight that we can talk to clients and kind of bring these issues out um over the course of a pro project. And it's it is really hard and I think everybody everybody wants to see fresh new pictures and pretty new colours and all of those kind of the outputs at the end and thinks it's really easy to get there, especially when they, uh, um, they're kind of 
brother-in-law or whoever it may be makes websites on the side or something and you've kind of got to tackle all of these um kind of existing biases across um across the team or whatever that may be um but you've got to um like Kat says just to challenge where they're at what's going right what's going wrong um and and that can be from a really low level of actually producing content's hard in itself never mind the technical platforms that um underpin all this stuff as well so what do you actually want to achieve from doing a weekly blog post and what are your expectations from how long that's going to come to fruition because if you think you're going to double your website traffic in two months then you're probably not going to get what you want out of it like are you investing budget behind that what's the kind of what's the support there but if you're thinking over a year or 18 months then that's going to help you get in that position then absolutely let's talk about that but yeah a lot of it is just kind of setting those expectations challenging existing assumptions and kind of trying to um bring the cost side into focus and it may be that there are really efficient ways to do it but there may be that look you want to do this right you're going to have to invest more money up front in to, to get there in the long run. Mm. 